Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you are here for a second or third or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and thank you for painting at home. Um, in this video today, we're gonna paint this really cute corgi and it's gonna be in the style of a lot of my other videos to where we do that kind of bold black outline to give it a bit of that pop art feel. For my first time painters, these videos are really good for you to get comfortable with the brushes, get comfortable with the paint, and get comfortable with painting at home. So be kind to yourself as you're going through this process and know that you will get better with each painting that you do. What you're gonna see in this video, in the description box below, there is a link to a supply kit. And that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular painting. So make sure you check out that kit, gather what you need, and then pick this video back up at the part that we start, at the point that we start painting. Another thing that you're gonna see down in the description box is a link for a traceable. And my traceable is for my beginner and first time painters. It helps you transfer that initial image onto your canvas so that way you kind of have a starting point and it's not such a blank canvas. So check out that link on where to acquire your traceable. And then there's also another video on how to transfer your traceable to your canvas. So check that out and kind of get your prep work done and then come back to this point in the video to continue the painting process. Um, it may sound like kind of a lot, especially to my first timers. So just take it as a uh, kind of one step at a time and be kind to yourself in the process. You are actually gonna do better than you think you're capable of, and you're gonna be a little more relaxed at the end of the painting process than you possibly are right now. Um, so kind of enough talking, let's go ahead and jump into painting. All right, guys, I hope you're ready to paint. Go on over to where you have all your supplies. And as always, make sure you take your progress photos. And after you transfer your traceable to your canvas or your panel, you're gonna take the small pointy brush and black paint. And I want you to outline all those lines you just transferred. And as you're going through this, I want you to play with the pressure of your brush. Pushing a little bit harder against the canvas creates a wider line, a little less pressure, and maybe a little bit of water on your brush with mixed in with your paint uh, will create a bit of a skinnier line. And just play with those. Um, if you have some places where they're thicker lined and some are skinnier, that's okay. Right now, this is just practice. And as you can see where I'm filling in the eyes, you can reference your traceable. And I am filling in that circle, that black circle. Uh, that's the pupil of our corgi. And where that white dot is that kind of overlaps that black circle, leave that white on, um, on your canvas. If you happen to paint over it with the black circle, um, don't freak out about it. We can reapply that white dot at the end of the painting. So again, right now, this is just really good practice, getting comfortable with the brush, the pressure of the brush, and kind of even just how the paint flows off the paintbrush. All right, so pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna be painting the background now. All right, so we're gonna be painting the background now. So using probably the large or medium flat brush, you can see I grab actually just kind of a chunk of yellow and a chunk of green and mix them in between where the two colors are. And it doesn't really matter what shade you get. If you want a little more yellow in yours or a little more green in yours, go ahead and add that. And we're gonna be filling in the space from the black lines. And I do recommend that you let the black lines dry before you start painting your background. But we're going from the edges of our pet to the edges of the canvas. And if you have some variety in there, a little more green in one area, a little more yellow in another, that's okay. It actually adds um, some nice variety to your background. All right, so here we've got wet on wet blending. And you can see I slapped the green on there. And you'll notice that as you move the brush, it blends with your background and the new color that you introduce. 
And you can do this with pretty much any color that you want. You do need to do it while the background is wet. That is why it is called a wet on wet blending method. If you're using student grade paint, I do encourage that you paint or apply your paint a little bit thicker than you may be comfortable with. That way you have a little bit more workability and this wet on wet blending technique will be a little more fun for you. All right, if you're one of my first time painters, take a deep breath for me. You're doing good. And we're gonna pause the video, take our progress photo. We're gonna be starting with black and filling in just a few areas. We're gonna fill in that gum line and a little bit more eyeliner around our corgi. And I am using the middle flat brush or the medium flat brush. If you need to use this small pointy brush, go right ahead and do that. And we're just filling in the gum line on either side of the tongue. And I will switch to the pointy brush when I start doing the eyeliner uh, around the eyes, so that way I can make smaller dots. And I believe I'm filling in the nose here as well, just the top part, leaving a little section uh, with the white of the canvas. All right, now a small pointy brush and around the eyes. Again, if you're one of my first time painters, take a deep breath, just relax. It takes a lot of courage to paint at home and the fact that you're actually going through this video and painting shows that you have a lot of courage and that you're willing to try new things. So that's awesome. All right, so you're gonna pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna move back to the small uh, or medium flat brush and raw sienna. And we're gonna start putting in the dark shades on the tan portions of this corgi. And again, I'm using that middle flat brush, medium flat brush, and we're just gonna be making little dots or dash marks as we apply this. And what I want you to do is pause the video at appropriate points. I do try to remind you to pause, but you don't have to wait for that. You can pause it at any point. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna look on screen and notice the placement where I've put a particular shade and the shape that it makes. All I want you to do is to look at the screen and then mimic that on your canvas. And what you're doing is kind of training your eye, uh, your eye hand coordination to look at what you uh, see on screen and then do your best to mimic it on your canvas, transfer it to your canvas. And the more that you do this, the more comfortable you get and the easier it becomes. So for my first time painters, just kind of go with the process. Remember to breathe and relax and uh, go all the way through this video. And if you're using student grade paint, uh, especially the raw sienna, especially uh, what I'm using right now, it is on the thin or more transparent side. So I'm gonna recommend that you either do uh, one of two options. Either apply your paint a lot thicker right now, so that way it is a bit more opaque, or uh, apply two layers to it, two coats to this to give it more opaque coverage. And you can go through this whole video and then go through it a second time and just apply more paint on top of what you've already painted. Uh, so a couple options there for you. All right, and here, if you even overlap the background, that's okay. And if you need to, you can move down to the small pointy brush at any time. Um, all I want you to do is kind of get comfortable with your tools. So if I'm using something and you're not, you need to use something different, go right ahead and do that. Grab the tool you need. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna go in, in for a lighter shade of raw sienna. So we're gonna be adding white to our raw sienna and kind of stepping down a shade or two. And again, you're just gonna look at the placement of where this goes and mimic that on your canvas. If you are painting at kind of a swift pace and your raw sienna is still wet as you're applying the light raw sienna, feel free to blend where the two shades meet. And you can do a little bit of uh, 
similar to wet on wet blending that we did in the background. But there's just a small window for that. So if you are painting on a bit of the slower side and your raw sienna is already dry, that's okay. That's just where your, your painting is today. And as you paint more in the future, I'm going to encourage you to kind of push your comfort zones, maybe paint a little faster than you're comfortable with, maybe paint a little slower than you normally go, just to kind of get a different understanding for what you're capable of and what you can do with the paint. All right, take a deep breath. If you're holding your breath without realizing it, and amazing how a couple of colors is starting to bring this corgi to life. And if you want to put more tan in other places that I do not put it in, feel free to adjust your painting to your liking. And again, if you have to make your light raw sienna a second or third or fourth time, don't stress about getting the exact same shade of light raw sienna. It is to your benefit to have some variety in there. And the more that you paint, the more comfortable you'll get with mixing some of those shades and different colors. And here you can see I did go over the black lines. That's okay. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. You're gonna clean your brush and we're gonna go for light gray. We're gonna move into the white fur on this corgi. And you can see here, I put a little bit of white next to the black and just pulled a tiny amount of black into um, the white to make our light gray. And we're going just a few little spots on top of the gum line and above the nose, kind of it's almost like the highlight on the nose. And then now we're making a little bit lighter gray. And you can kind of see the step down variations um, on the plate. And this very light gray is gonna be in the white areas of the fur. And it may feel kind of odd putting gray paint where there is white fur. But because we are painting on a flat surface, we have to kind of create a illusion of a 3D object on a flat surface. So by doing, uh, doing this, by putting light gray on the white shadow areas, it makes the white canvas and even the white paint that we're gonna put onto it later stand out even more. So our darker shades kind of recede and our lighter shades pop forward. I like telling my classes that uh, they're all magicians when they come in, creating that illusion on a flat surface. And with everything, you get better with practice. So please try to find a way to paint on a monthly basis to keep your stress level uh, either down or at bay. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. Very exciting right now. We're gonna move into just white paint and fill in the remaining canvas space on this corgi's fur, except for the tongue and the eyes. And again, if you're painting on a bit of this swift pace, um, when you come up next to the light gray shadow that we put in, you can do a little softening, a little blending. And you'll see a few places where I put this white paint over the tan, over the raw sienna paint. This kind of helps um, merge the two sections of fur. And again, if you need to adjust, so it mimics a corgi you know, or adjust it because you feel like it, go right ahead and do that. When I use the small pointy brush, especially on the chest of this corgi, I'm actually making dash marks and I'm moving the brush kind of in the direction that the fur would go on, uh, on this corgi's uh, neck and chest. So it's kind of radiating out. When we get into the face, I'll just be making more little overlapping dots to fill in the space. 
So if it helps to think about each brushstroke as a strand of fur on this corgi, um, it just adds some nice movement as your brushstrokes compile to create the shading. And here, adding those little eyebrows right on top of the tan colors. All right, any other little areas that you need to fill in, aside from the tongue and the eyes, your entire canvas should almost be covered in paint. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna move into painting the tongue. So I'm using the small pointy brush, white with a tiny, tiny amount of red to make a light shade of pink, and you can make the shade of pink anything that you want. We're gonna fill in that whole tongue space, then we're gonna make another shade paint on top of this to create more of those shadows. All right, so here we're gonna add a touch of black. Tiny amount of black goes a long way in that pink to make a grayish pink. And we're adding a shadow to the back of the tongue as if there's a shadow happening on the tongue as it goes back into the mouth of the corgi. It is very similar to that wet on wet blending that we did in the background because the pink, light pink, is still wet as you're adding this grayish pink on top of it. And in the ears, there's a bit more red to the pink, so I'm adjusting the shade to more of a reddish gray pink, and we'll be applying that into the ears. Now, as we Go through the painting and even at this step, I want you to at some point get out of your chair, walk to the edge of the room and look at your painting from a distance of 10 to 20 feet away. This is the normal viewing distance for most things in life, but definitely kind of for artwork. And things look entirely different from this distance compared to the two feet in front of you. It has been while you've been creating this. So as you continue to paint, as you're painting today, get in the habit of looking at your painting from that distance and then going back and painting. All right, so pause the video, take your progress picture. We're gonna use burnt sienna, reddish brown, and we're gonna fill in the eyes. And on this particular video, you'll see where I actually go over the pupil. And the next step, we will reapply the pupil and then we'll reapply the catch light. So if you mess anything up in painting, just let the paint dry and paint right on top of it again. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna move into black paint and we're gonna redo all those outlines. And on this one, on this video, like I said earlier, I uh, went over the pupil, so I'll be reapplying the pupil. If you did not do that on yours, you do not have to reapply the black pupil. And as we do this outline, um, the, find the pressure of your brush, the harder you push your brush against the canvas, the bigger those lines are. The lighter you touch your brush to the canvas, the skinnier they are. You can add a touch, a tiny amount of water to your black paint to give it a little bit more fluidity, but you never want your brush dripping wet and you really never wanna add more than 30% water to your brush. On the edges of the fur, on the neck and the back, you'll see that I actually use kind of short choppy brush strokes because uh, our corgi is a little bit fluffier to where I'll use more solid lines on the face. Completely optional for what you want to do for your painting. All right, and pretty cool how it's starting to take shape and it's looking really good. You should be very proud of yourself. Hopefully you've been so focused on this, you haven't thought of other things. All right, take your progress picture and we're gonna go to white paint. We're gonna put that catch light back in. You can reference your traceable as to the placement of that catch light, but it's just a white dot on top of that black pupil. And we're gonna add a few other highlights and then we have completed this painting. So thanks so much for taking time out of your day and painting with me. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to painting with you in the future. And uh, I hope you continue to find creative outlets. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope you had a fun time painting and that your corgis turned out really cute. Um, thanks for taking time out of your day to spend with me and paint and go through this process. Um, as you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at paint with lovejoy or hashtag paint with lovejoy or email them to me. It really is through your pictures, your feedback, your support that this channel keeps growing and gives me um, enough motivation to keep making these videos. So please let me know how you're doing at home. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that and share this channel with your friends, family members, co-workers, other people that you think could benefit from painting at home and just kind of enjoy the process. Because again, it is through you that um, this channel is going to grow and this community is going to get a little bit bigger. So thank you in advance for doing all of that. Hey guys, <clears throat> let's try that again. <laughs> time out of your day to spend a little bit of time with me. Blah, 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 blah.